I read your disturbing manga recommendations, and they were something else. Sick and Tired Recommended Pumpkin Night, created in 2016. This manga is about a girl named Naoko, who was severely bullied to the point of being disfigured. The bullying resulted in Naoko being sent to a mental hospital. Several years later, Naoko escapes from this hospital, and begins to exact revenge against her tormentors. This story is told from the perspective of Kazuya, who was friends with Naoko's bullies, but he also had feelings for Naoko as well. This manga is a lot like a slasher movie, with all kinds of blood and gore. The bullies get picked off one by one by Nayoka, who now goes as Pumpkin Knight. The first 20 chapters in this story are pretty interesting, but things take a strange political turn for some reason. I just don't really get it. It's like I'm enjoying a slasher manga and then Trump shows up, which feels super out of place in this kind of story. It was just so outlandish. Similarly, after a certain character dies, the manga kind of falls off, with the plot becoming so convoluted and absurd. The art is very good though, and the paneling fits the tone of the story. The most interesting thing about Pumpkin Knight is Pumpkin Knight herself, so let me explain. Nayoka was a pretty quirky girl, which led to her being being bullied. Despite her being a cute girl, she didn't fit in, because she was unabashedly herself, such as wearing a bow to stand out. This self-embracement led to her becoming a pariah, leading to abuse from her peers. As the story goes on, you could see how the bullying escalated, and how the bullies demonized Naoko just because she was different. One night, during a Halloween party, Naoko got stuck in a pumpkin mask, which caught fire. One of these bullies caused this fire, and it severely disfigured Naoko. This was the inciting incident, where she lost her mind and became the demon her classmates made her out to be. Despite being a monster, Naoko still had a bit of her humanity left, which is displayed in her relationship with Kazuya. The reason Pumpkin Knight falls off is because an event happens that throws all this good writing away, and while the wise move would have been to end the story with Naoko's arc, the author chose to continue the series, leading to it becoming nonsensical and repetitive. Because Naoko had a compelling motive to kill for, she was an interesting character, but when this motivation was destroyed, the story suffered quite a bit. Overall, the first part of the story is very intriguing and disturbing, but after that, it's kind of just silly. There's also a prequel called Pumpkin Pumpkin Knight Gaiden, Naoko, which is about Naoko's experience at the hospital after she went nuts. It's kind of wild as well, but it isn't too bad. That wasn't the only recommendation that Sick and Tired had though. They also recommended Shahiri Maru's The Laughing Vampire. This manga has two volumes, which are very different from each other. The first volume is about a boy who is resurrected as a vampire and about how this changes his life. Being a vampire exposes our protagonist, Konosuke Mori, to a whole new side of society. As a vampire, Konosuke sees all kinds of hedonistic and perverted things, and the way he deals with these things is the most compelling part of the story. The art is beautiful as well, and the paneling is just on a whole nother level. Even if you don't think the story sounds all too interesting, I would recommend you check it out just for the art. The second volume is a bit less interesting in my opinion, as it follows a more typical vampire story. It focuses a lot more on the mystery side of things, where secrets and clues are slowly revealed throughout the story. There's also a lot of perverted stuff, which feels kind of fan y Personally, I'm not a big fan of that sort of thing, but it did kind of work in context with the story. The manga certainly is 18 plus though, so keep that in mind. But yeah, two good recommendations from Sick and Tired. The next recommendation came from Tommy A Romance, who suggested I read Children, which you know is going to be messed up just from the title. The story is about Igarashi Taru, who is a college student that has accepted a part-time job taking care of some kids in a rural area. Unfortunately for Taru, the eldest of these children, Mire, has been brainwashed into believing adults are evil and should all be killed. The children also eat the adults they kill, and as the story goes on, there's a lot of death and gore. Although the concepts in this story are disturbing, their execution is a bit iffy. The gore is prioritized over the story, and the ending was a bit disappointing as well. I will say the art was pretty good, it really creates this juxtaposition with the tone of the story, which actually kind of works in this manga. Overall, if you're looking for a quick, gory story, you should go check out Tommy's recommendation, and give Shulden a read. The fourth recommendation came from Ava Flower, who recommended I check out Made in Abyss. This manga is absurdly popular, so I will be brief. There is this fantasy world where there's a big hole, or abyss, in the middle of the city. Our protagonist, Rico, finds a robot named Reg near the top layer of the abyss, and they go on a quest to find Rico's mother, who had disappeared at the bottom of the abyss. The disturbing stuff lies in the monsters and how the children are treated in this manga. The kids in the story go through a lot, and there's quite a bit of gore and disturbing concepts that are explored. Despite this, I would not recommend this manga. The most disturbing thing is how children are depicted, and it got to the point where I just couldn't keep reading this. I have seen the anime though, which it's a lot less creepy in that regard, than the manga, so maybe check that out instead. The final recommendation comes from Mr. Soyboy, who recommended Fire Punch. This recommendation was also endorsed by Thiessen. I actually covered this manga way back in January, but a lot has changed with Fujimoto since then, so I don't mind covering it again. Fire Punch takes place in this post-apocalyptic world, where it is permanently winter. Because of this, there isn't any food to go around. Agni and his sister have powerful regeneration abilities, and their village resorts to cutting off their limbs to use as food. The siblings do this willingly, and one day, 
night, a strange group of people show up to the village. They are disgusted by this cannibalism, and they decide to kill everyone in the village because of it. The leader of these invaders, Doma, has fire powers, and his fire can never be extinguished. Doma torches everyone in the village, including Agni and his sister. As his sister burns to death, she orders Agni to live, and that's just the first chapter or so. This is a revenge story, and there's a lot of depraved stuff in this manga, as expected of Fujimoto. There's a lot of cool horror concepts that are explored, and this is all topped off with meta-ironic jokes. This is a pretty good mix of disturbing and funny, but Fujimoto makes sure not to let the humor get too much in the way of the heavy moments. Overall, it's a pretty good manga, and you should really check it out. But yeah, that does it for your recommendations. This was pretty fun, and I'd like to do it again sometime, so if you have any recommendations, feel free to leave a comment. It doesn't really matter if they're disturbing or not, I really just need stuff to read. I am also working on a much bigger video right now, so hopefully that'll come out by the end of the year. The next few videos will probably be a bit shorter though. Also, thank you for your support on the Felix video. I was pretty nervous about that one, since the character is kind of controversial, so it was a relief to see all of the nice things you guys had to say. It meant a lot to me. Thank you for watching. Later gamers.